This video is going to be on reticulocytes and polychromatophils. I have shown here the maturation sequence of red blood cells from the ruboblast to mature red cell. Everything but for the mature red blood cell is called a red blood cell precursor. And within the bone marrow, the ruboblast matures to prorubrocyte, rubrocyte, then metarubrocyte, and eventually polychromatophil. Very low numbers of metarubrocytes are released from the bone marrow, but many more polychromatophils are released. And these polychromatophils and metarubrocytes eventually mature into mature red blood cells within the blood. This occurs in all species except the horse. Horses do not release polychromatophils into peripheral blood. Now what exactly is a polychromatophil? Well, it is a young red blood cell that we identify with our routine blood smear stain. So in the clinics, that will be a DIFQIC. In our lab, it's a modified right or a right stain. Polychromatophil literally means many color love. So it's a cell that loves many colors. And that's because it contains a combination of hemoglobin, which stains red, and RNA, which stains blue. Now, as the polychromatophil matures, it actually extrudes the RNA and makes more hemoglobin. So it loses its blue and it gets more red. So then what is a reticulocyte? Well, reticulocytes are also young red blood cells but they're identified with a different stain or by your hematology analyzer. So polychromatophils are reticulocytes. We're just enumerating them or counting them with different methods. A reticulocyte literally means reticulated cell, and that's because when you add new methylene blue to the blood, to the polychromatophils, it aggregates the RNA within the reticulocyte. So you can actually see it on your new methylene blue stain smear. So this is what a reticulocyte looks like on a new methylene blue stain. All of the RNA has been clumped and aggregated together into those blue reticular arrays. And these aggregate reticulocytes are present in all species except the horses. Horses do not release reticulocytes from the bone marrow. If these uh, reticulocytes are increased, then that means that there's active red blood cell hyperplasia or active erythroid hyperplasia in the bone marrow. Now cats have a second type of reticulocyte called the punctate reticulocyte, and you can see little dots of blue, little dots of reticulum. If these are increased, then that means that the cat has had previous red blood cell hyperplasia or erythroid hyperplasia within the past one to two weeks. If you just see the term reticulocyte, so like on a CBC report, they don't differentiate aggregate versus punctate, you can assume that it's the aggregate reticulocytes that they're enumerating. Now when we are uh, evaluating reticulocytes, there's two concentrations of, con of reticulocytes you'll see on the CBC. There's the percent reticulocyte count and then the absolute reticulocyte count. We always evaluate the reticulocyte numbers by what the absolute reticulocyte count is doing, whether it's normal or increased. If reticulocytes are increased, then we say that uh, the patient has regeneration. And in the presence of anemia, then that's called a regenerative anemia. So these reticulocytes are really helpful in identifying anemia as regenerative or non-regenerative. If the reticulocytes are normal or decreased, then we say that it's a non-regenerative anemia, or it could be an impending anemia or a pre-regenerative anemia that is within two to four days of the onset of anemia. So it will be regenerative in the next two to four days. Now, if you have the option of choosing between assessing regeneration based on the number of polychromatophils you see on a blood smear 
or the number of reticulocytes given to you by your hematology analyzer or by manual counting methods, then choose the reticulocyte concentration. That is a more accurate and precise way to assess regeneration in the patient.